While this farm recreates the recent past, a more distant past has been preserved in stone, and some of it can be seen in Macomb at the Museum of Geology on the campus of Western Illinois University. It's a growing collection that begins in one room and then spills out into the hallway. Here students waiting for class can explore the diversity of both the field of geology and the museum. We have a large example of what we call crocodile quartz. Crocodile quartz is, is interesting because the crystal structure of the quartz as it grew in the ground was such that you have a, a multifaceted, bumpy surface uh, with coloration of impurities that make it resemble a crocodile, crocodile's back, if you will. Uh, the specimen that we have is certainly the largest I've ever seen. It uh, weighs about 126 pounds, uh, which would be, as I understand, well over a million carats in weight. There's also a collection of fossils found at Maison Creek. It's an area known worldwide for its preservation of the softer tissues of some animals. We have uh, examples of clams and fish and uh, shrimp, as well as uh, what used to be known as blobs. Of course, these blobs uh, were later discovered to actually be preserved jellyfish. And you can imagine, because jellyfish have no hard parts, preserving a jellyfish in, in a fossil record is quite difficult and also somewhat rare. Uh, so these blobs tend to uh, be overlooked for years, but now we're finding that uh, they are indeed very well-preserved specimens. Our state fossil is the Tully monster, Tully monstrum gregarium. The most unusual thing about the Tully monster is we're not completely sure exactly what it is. There is no animal like it before it in the fossil record, and there is no animal exactly like it after it in the fossil record. It uh, would at first appear to be some sort of a slug-like animal or like a, uh, uh, some sort of squid. It has a long uh, proboscis with a uh, little toothed beak at the end, but apparently the mouth is not in that beak. The eyes are at the end of, of a rigid bar, uh, much like a snail's, except that it had no ability to control these individually. When one eye moved, the other eye would move in an opposite direction. Uh, so again, it was at the end of a rigid bar. Uh, the body appears to be segmented like a worm, uh, but it has few other characteristics like a worm. Best guess that I've heard recently is that it may be some sort of a heteropod gastropod or a shellless snail. And they usually come from uh, the northern area of Illinois. Uh, the fact is they are found only in Illinois, nowhere else in the world. We have lots of rock and mineral specimens as well including a, a fairly good-sized collection of our uh, state mineral, fluorite. It's uh, primarily used uh, now as a uh, uh, fluxing agent for s production of steel, if I'm not mistaken, as well as uh, production of fluorite or hydrofluoric acid. But what attracts the most attention, especially among younger visitors, are the dinosaur bones and reproductions. The largest, which dominates the main room, is the head of a T-Rex. It is a reproduction of one of the two that is in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Uh, Rex, as you probably know, and probably as most school kids can tell you, was about uh, 40 to 50 feet long, weighed somewhere around of eight tons, uh, and had teeth anywhere from six to eight inches in length. We have some reproductions of uh, Archaeopteryx, which is of course from the Solenhofen limestones in Germany and Bavaria. Uh, as well as uh, Compsognathus, which is another small meat-eating dinosaur that is uh, sometimes confused with Archaeopteryx and vice versa. We have uh, seven tail vertebrate from uh, Diplodocus. Diplodocus is a large sauropod from the Jurassic. Uh, these vertebra were found in what we now know as Dinosaur National Monument. Um, at that time it was a, uh, a private dig uh, funded by Andrew Carnegie. Uh, so when we got them, they were still left in the burlap and, uh, and plaster jackets. So we've put them on display that way so that people will get an idea of just what's involved in, in taking a massive chunk of rock, probably several hundred pounds in weight, uh, shielding it, jacketing it, and then sending it back to a museum where it will be painstakingly removed over a period of several years to expose the bones and eventually mount them. The museum is more than just pieces for waiting students to gaze at. It's also used as a teaching aid, and it attracts classes from area schools. 
these are things that you wouldn't necessarily find anywhere else. Uh, some of the material that we have, you would have to travel uh, hundreds of miles, if not maybe a thousand miles to find. Um, universities, of course, by nature, are uh, repositories of knowledge. And we, uh, we think that it's in part our duty to uh, put the, the materials that we have out for the public as well as for our students who are taking classes. The Geology Museum is on the first floor of Tillman Hall on the campus of Western Illinois University. To find out more about Western Illinois University's Geology Museum, call 309-298-1727.